This is my Restomod PC build, which allows me to experience vintage software and games on modern hardware. It sports a quad-core Intel Atom processor with 2GB of RAM, solid-state storage, and removable media drives from the days past. The system is running Windows 95 inside of a Kimu virtual machine running on Debian Linux. The result is a blazing fast Windows 95 setup, unlike any I had encountered in my early years of working with computers. I put this system together over the last four months or so, starting with this vintage 286 chassis that takes an AT-style motherboard. I didn't take any video of the case restoration, but here are some photos. As you can see, it was pretty grimy, likely from an industrial environment. I removed all of the case pieces and gave it a heavy retrobrite treatment, taking it from this to this. I added some badging to the front of the machine to give it a more authentic look. On the back, you will see some familiar vintage ports and some modern ports as well. On the top, you find the typical power and keyboard connectors. There is a five pin full-size DIN for the keyboard, as it should be. But as you move downwards, things get more interesting. First, we have an HDMI output, which is convenient for interfacing with modern display hardware. I really can't afford the prices that vintage CRT displays are going for, nor do I have the space. More on this later. Below HDMI, you will find gigabit ethernet, and then an audio line in, out, as well as a microphone input. Finally, there are four USB 2.0 ports for peripherals. It is a good arsenal of ports for a modest vintage workstation setup. I set out to build this machine to run productivity applications. Word processors, graphics editors, print software, vintage CAD, music composition, and more. If it happens to play some games as well, that would be great too. To that end, I decided to replace the damaged vintage hardware from this chassis with a modern Intel Atom-based single board computer. The star of the show here is an Atomic Pi passively cooled system. I had originally planned to use a Raspberry Pi, but found that x86 emulation was not as fast as I wanted it to be. This hits the sweet spot at under $50 for the board, and it runs Linux well out of the box. Many of the devices necessary to provide signals to the rear ports are USB based. To support this, a number of powered USB hubs support the various protocol converters. Audio is supplied from an inexpensive USB sound card, for example. Optical drives are supported by USB to IDE bridges, and a USB floppy drive controller attaches removable magnetic media. HDMI and Ethernet are simple pass-through outputs from the single board computer. The USB ports are provided by the USB hubs, and there are dual parallel and serial ports that are mapped through to the VM. This combination of I.O. is modern enough to make it convenient to use while still creating a playground for vintage hardware and software. Aside from the resto modded computer, I also bought a few other mid-range vintage computing peripherals. I have a period correct HP DeskJet printer from eBay, one which ink is still available for, which is nice. I also ordered a new old stock IBM membrane keyboard, a Microsoft USB optical mouse, and Altec Lansing speakers. These are the exact set that I grew up with, and they are actually sounding pretty good considering they're a pair of plastic speakers. And last but not least, I picked up this beige Fujitsu LCD monitor. It is a nice monitor with good color rendering and a DVI input, which adapts well from HDMI. After organizing the cables with some Velcro straps, this is what the setup looks like. As I mentioned earlier, I built this machine to be able to run productivity applications and decided to challenge myself to do something productive with this machine. I want some magnets for the side of the case to cover up some of the battle scars. I'm going to create these magnets using nothing but vintage software, including finding the logo. I installed the latest version of Netscape to support Windows 95 in this virtual machine. Surprisingly, Google's homepage still works marvelously. After a quick image search, I was able to find the MS-DOS logo. I used Macromedia Fireworks version 4 to make minor edits to background colors to the various logos that I wanted to print on magnet paper. As you can see, these productivity applications are working great in this virtualized Windows 95 environment, and performance is fantastic. I ordered an old copy of CorelDRAW 8 from a seller on eBay, 
and it came with a few other programs like Photoshop Elements and Corel Word Perfect. I have the optical drives mapped to the VM, and you can see that installation from CD works great. I used CorelDRAW to lay out a page of magnets to print and cut out with an X-Acto knife. These are a few logos from companies and brands that I remember growing up with and seeing on tech TV when I was a kid. Before printing on the more expensive magnet paper, I did a test print on ordinary paper. The printer is quite slow in this setup, I believe due to some overhead in the virtual environment, but it does work. At one point while I was setting up this printer, this test page unexpectedly printed out. Do it all with color. This thing is hilarious. With the test print out of the way, I reprinted on the magnet paper and cut the magnets down to size. I'm pretty happy with these and can spend some time coming up with even better designs for next time. So there you have it, a quick tour of my ResoMod vintage computing setup. It's a pretty cozy place to sit and play with old software. I used CorelDRAW a lot in years past, and it seems that my muscle memory for the application has not faded at all. My next step will be to create some more virtual machines with different operating systems. I would like to get Windows XP and some software from the early 2000s going next. It would also be fun to set up a Windows 95 environment that is more tailored towards games. The display driver that I am using for this environment is optimized for high resolution and color depth, but is incompatible with most games. And I might even reconsider 95 and go for 98, which I think is better for game compatibility. As far as the host environment goes, I am using Debian with a few tweaks to make it more comfortable for retro use. I have Samba configured to share files with Windows 95, which means turning down some of the security features. The Intel Atom board is surprisingly performant with four cores. I do wish it had a little more RAM, but two gigabytes hasn't been a hard stop to anything that I want to do yet. I use a set of bash scripts to start and manage the virtual machine images. The more modern libvirt-based solutions lack support for emulation of legacy ISA hardware, which is required to get networking working inside of these old operating systems. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about this hobby project of mine. If you have any ideas for programs that I should try out, leave them in the comments below. I'm thinking about trying Adobe Premiere 5 next to see if I could make a video for this channel, but I'm not really sure how that's going to go. I also have a Sony Mavica digital camera, which uses a floppy disk to store the photos. It would go very well with this computer as I do have floppy drives on the front to remove the photos from the camera. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. That really motivates me to make more of these. And if you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. If you have any suggestions or have any thoughts about things I could have missed or done better, uh, leave a comment. I do read all of them and I do appreciate hearing that people enjoy my work. I don't make a ton of videos, work keeps me very, very busy, but when I do have time, I put a lot of effort into them and I really appreciate that people enjoy my work. So I hope you enjoy this video as well. I don't have anything else, and so with that, I will see you next time.